Jen from Jen Geigui Knits. I'm back from a couple weeks break from YouTube. Uh, my family's been on spring break and my kids have been home from school for about a week and a half. And today they're back at school. And so now I finally have my nice quiet house uh, where I can kind of collect my thoughts. And I've been catching up on lots of work and stuff that I needed to do today. And I also had um, my weekly pottery class this morning. So it's been like a really nice re-entry into like my stuff <laughs> today. And the kids back at school, just it's good to get all back in our routines and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm kind of back at like all my knitting stuff um, and graphic design stuff. I'm a graphic design freelance artist and I do um, freelance work for local companies here and there. And then recently I've been working for some knitting companies as well. So if you ever have a need for a graphic designer who is also a knitter and understands that type of thing, um, hit me up. <laughs> I've, uh, I've done book layouts and all kinds of stuff, pattern layouts, anything you need, I do that. <laughs> Logos, photo layout, text layout, all that good stuff, print, web, whatever. So yeah, that's kind of what I do as like a normal job. And then I do all my knitting design stuff in between and it's all very sporadic and crazy, but that's kind of how my life is and how it's been for several years. So anyway, um, we went to Minneapolis for a couple days on spring break as a family, which was really nice and fun. Um, my son is on the autism spectrum and his favorite thing ever is roller coasters. So we did that. We went to a um, Sea Life Aquarium um, and hung out in Minneapolis and ate some good food and had coffee and all that good stuff. So that was kind of a nice getaway, even though it was colder there than it is here in Iowa and we're cold too. But today we've kind of got our spring weather back and after like a ton of snow, some super cold temperatures. Now today it's like 50 and it feels like summertime. So I was repotting some plants and I planted some seedlings and pots inside today. And I just feel like spring is coming and I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> like I have to help it along a little bit because I'm just ready for these warmer days and even just taking a walk feels so good and you're not freezing out there. So yeah, one quick thing before I forget. Uh, this Sunday, March 26th, I'm going to be participating again in the Knit for Food Knit-a-thon. And if you haven't heard of this, it is a big deal and it makes a big difference in people's lives. Um, in 2021, Knit for Food raised $265,810. Last year in 2022, we raised $271,761. That means over the past two years, knitters have raised over half a million dollars to fight hunger with our knitting needles and the help of our awesome knitting community and friends and family and everybody who has supported this cause. We'll be doing it again on March 26th, which is this Sunday, 2023. Um, I'll be joining knitters from around the world by participating in a 12 hour knit-a-thon um, to raise money to fight food insecurity. And this is the time people need it. And it's groceries are crazy expensive. Um, it's really tough out there. My daughter volunteers at a local food community service place and um, the need is high. It's it's everywhere. It's every it's it's in the U.S. It's abroad, and these um, charities help everywhere. So funds would be split evenly between Feeding America, World Central Kitchen, No Kid Hungry, and Meals on Wheels. Um, and it makes a big big difference. Your one dollar donation helps. Your five dollar donation helps. Your ten dollar donation helps. Any amount when we all band together and we all help out. It makes a huge, huge difference and we can do this. So, you know, it's just knitting, I get it, but um, Knit for Food is the real deal and I was really proud to participate last year and I'm happy to do it again this year. And so I really hope you'll help support us or knit along with us. You can join in on it too. Um, last year, they had Zoom presentations all day. You can, you know, just knit at home, whatever. Um, but they each, um, organization, Feeding America, World Central Kitchen, No Kid Hungry, Meals on Wheels, all had representatives that came and spoke to us and told us where the money goes. 
how it's used and how far each donation goes and how many meals that provides for people and families and children. So link, use the link below. I'm putting the, po the link and everything to donate below in my notes. It'll be the first thing there. Um, and I thank you so much for your support. Let's do this one stitch at a time. Let me kind of show you what I've been up to and a couple things I got in Minnesota. Um, unrelated to knitting, um, Minneapolis is our closest Ikea store. And if you've kind of seen my house and my vibe, we are a little bit Ikea around here. It's just like works with our living environment and just the color schemes and stuff. I love, they always have like a yellow and a lot of bright white and a lot of modern stuff. And that's just kind of attractive to me. Anyway, they're, they have a Marimekko collection right now, which is a little bit random. I was hoping, hoping, hoping when I heard about the Marimekko Ikea stuff, I really wanted it to be bedding or like bathroom towels and stuff like that with their really cool prints, but it is not that exactly. <laughs> It's like, there's like um, some, like there's a, a wooden bench and like some hooks, like a rack type thing that are wooden. And then there's some glass things that are kind of, um, they almost look like they have fragmented sides. I don't know how to de describe that. And then they have some things that kind of go with like a sauna life, which I don't have a sauna, but they had like robes, water bottles, a sauna bucket with a ladle, and some other things. But it's all kind of like, hmm. But I, I love their prints so much that I had to go see it all and check it out. You'll have to check it out online if you haven't seen it yet, just out of curiosity, because it's interesting. But um, I did get a water bottle. Look at the cool print and the colors. I love this. And the handle's really a great size for like going on a walk and you can, you know, just comfortably carry your bottle without like holding it like this. Um, with a nice little wood handle. I really like these green stripes and the orange. So I got a water bottle and I got two robes. Um, again, this awesome orange with the green stripes. Um, I know I'll wear this a lot, even to the pool, I think I'll wear it. It's almost like a linen-y type fabric, canvasy linen. I'm not even going to say, but I got this one. And then they had this other design that's like pink with leaves, pink and blue. Um, I mean, I could take it off and show you. This one's harder to see. And I thought especially since Lotus now is like my size or my height, it'd be cool if we both had one or, you know, I'll wear them both too, but sometimes it's nice to have two. And I just love the prints. I'm just a sucker for the prints. Okay, let's be honest. Um, so here, it's like, it almost reminds me of fiddle leaf fig leaves, which I have a plant back there. It just, it's that exact leaf shape. This is the other robe with a little tie. I just thought that was really fun. Yeah, I think these are perfect for like the pool or even just hanging around at home on a Saturday in the summertime. Um, and then yeah, the stripes. Let's just open it. Open them up. Cardboard somewhere in there. Yeah, I really like this one. I just think they're really fun. I'm a sucker for Marimekko. Anytime they have a collaboration with like Target or Uniqlo or whoever, I'm just like, it's really hard for me to resist. So yeah, these were really fun, I thought. And then, and I'm really proud of myself because I did not go crazy at Ikea. Like sometimes I do, <laughs> especially since we don't have one in our city. We have one in Kansas City and one in Minneapolis and we're in Des Moines and we're like right in the middle of those two. So. It is a treat to go to Ikea, and sometimes I just can't help myself with all the little things, but the, the Marimekko stuff, I only got the water bottle, the two robes, and of course, a big nice tote. This is again, that nice leaf print that I thought was so nice with the blue handles. And I mean, I use these for transporting knitting stuff all the time, basically, like um, sometimes stores have me come and bring samples, like knitted samples, 
or a bunch of yarn. Like these are always my transport things in Ikea bags. So now I have like a nice cool one with a Marimekko print. And these colors are just fun, the orange and the green and the blue. So yeah, that's like the same print as that robe, but different colors. So yeah, I was proud that I didn't go too overboard with the Ikea, but I got some really fun things that are very useful and cute. So yeah, that was my main shopping thing that I did in Minneapolis, which was really fun. And other than that, I'll get back to knitting. Um, on my needles right now, and almost off of my needles right now, is a really fun cardigan in a cartridge rib. And this is um, Modern Daily Knitting Atlas. It's their yarn, um, which is a Rambouillet wool, very light and very soft, 0% itchy. And this color is my favorite color in the world, and it's called Pear. And it's like a perfect chartreuse yellow green mostly yellow. Um, and I love this and I cannot wait to finish. Um, I'm going to be talking more about this on the Modern Daily Knitting blog really soon. Like this is due this Friday. <laughs> so I still have to finish the sleeves. The sweater part is done. I have to do sleeves, but the sleeves are drop sleeves. So it's really like a shorter sleeve. I think it's like 13 inches of knitting for each sleeve and this cartridge rib goes really quickly and it's on US 8 needles. So it's a quick little, it zips along pretty fast. Um, and then I have to seam on, check this out. I've never, rarely, I think I've done this once or twice, but um, this has been like the most fun button band and ignore my little ends here because I ran out of yarn. Um, hold on here. This button band is knitted on US fours, so teeny tiny needles to make this really dense, nice, chewy fabric. And then this is knit double, so I will be folding it over the edge and sewing it on afterwards. So that's why I kind of left it on the needle because I know after I block this, I have to see the actual length compared to my sweater to make sure it's the right length. So I left it on the needles in case I need a little bit more length. And also you can see there's the double button holes. And so when you fold it, you know, they line up. I have to go get buttons too. Anyway, I'm not explaining this very well, but it's just so cute and fun. It was like a snake. Like when I first started knitting, one of the popular patterns for kids was this snake scarf and it was it just reminds me of that I made this little snake scarf for a lotus that was green and then you sew on buttons for eyes and make a little tongue and I thought that was like the coolest thing ever when I started knitting <laughs> I think like 2007 maybe anyway this reminded me of knitting that snake scarf only it's a button band but yeah I'm gonna be writing a whole little story about this sweater project on the Modern Daily Knitting blog, so check for that soon. You'll see all the details about this project. I've always wanted a yellow cardigan. I don't know why I don't have one yet, and I just thought this is like the perfect everyday um, throw over a t-shirt type of cardigan that I wear normally, and I just need one in this exact color. So I'm excited to share more about that, and I'm hoping I can get it done in time. I will. I just have two sleeves and some seaming. I can do that by Friday, today's Monday. I'm in good shape. But yeah, I'm excited to see that come together. Um, in the mail, I got my copy of Neons and Neutrals by La Bien Ami, Amy, um, and all the collaborators that she worked with to make this. And I know everybody, this is like the buzz um, in the knitting world right now is this book because it is so exciting. It's so fun. Um, I've just been diving into it like little by little when I have some spare time and it's such such a beautiful book it has the beautiful yellow and these beautiful photos it's just gorgeous every project in here is just really fun and different and special and the photos are so beautiful and special and i have several favorite projects already and I, it, I mean, I wanna knit everything and I already have a really long to-do list, to knit list, but I can't help it. This is just really exciting and fun, beautifully photographed. You know, it's um, 
line of publishing. So they do this nice cover where it's like linen and just beautifully bound with the ribbon, you know, bookmark. But let me show you. There's a nice little letter there, some nice articles. I mean, look how beautiful. I'm just a big fan of like every project in here. Um, is this, let's see, this hat. Have you seen the hat in here? Is it this? Yes. Look at this hat. It's incredible. It's so different and so fun. I have to make the hat. And I've been trying to stash dive and see what I have. Um, Cause my colors will probably turn out different than this, but there's one thing I'm gonna make that's pretty close to the sample here or a sample that Amy has. I saw it in New York. This, let me find the page. Vidiera, I think is how you say it. This is gonna be my first project, I think. Um, and this is by Misa, Misa Tomikawa, who I was just, I was looking at an interview with them on YouTube recently. Um, they have a really interesting story and history and knit crochet story. But this is, uh, I believe it's side to side. Nope, it's just kind of modular, a cardigan, and you can choose to do a hood and pockets or you can choose not to. And um, it's very color blocky. And I'm trying to find a different picture. The sample that Amy had in New York was kind of chartreuse and different pinks. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. I'm not finding, okay, I'm not finding what I'm thinking of, but it'll be this with kind of a pink button band around and the sleeves will be the white pink and the chartreuse, I think. So I'll show you the yarns I'm thinking of using from my stash. I've got this and this for the two pinks because I need a big contrast in those. And I never, ever, ever, ever knit with pink, <laughs> like hardly ever in my whole life. But it's this book. It's the whole neons and neutrals vibe and the whole thing. And then I'm just suddenly feeling like I need to do this in pink. So I'm using pink. I might use Modern Daily Knitting Atlas with it. There's that pear color again, the same color I'm using for my cardigan. I have to see how much I have left though, because I need some of it. And then I have another, I have a, a brighter yellow and I don't even know what this is because I wound it a long time ago and I do not remember. But that's nice too. It's a little bit different than, it's a little different. <laughs> then I have, I don't know if this goes, a more orangey yellow, but it kind of goes. Like sometimes the weird color combinations are good. And then I've got like Amy's sample in New York was kind of this vibe. It was pretty much these colors with this kind of greenish. And then I kind of thought, I don't know about maybe this, maybe this. And this is one of those things where you can seriously just add it. Cause on the back, there's like blocks of color. They're more square and these rectangles and you can just kind of throw in whatever. And I do think this kind of works for that. So we will see, it might just be a journey and, you know, see as I go, what looks good next to what, and just start adding things in. I don't know if I like this one. <laughs> so yeah, it'll have to see. And maybe even another neutral for my stash that could possibly work its way in. But that is my first plan for the Neons and Neutrals book. And then I have to make that hat. The hat, what is it called? Sorry. The hat. Oh yeah, and it also it talks about it talks about mixing brands, mixing up your stash, swatching from what you have, um, mixing different weights, holding different things together. That's like a big part of this book. Um, is not just like buying all one DK yarn or whatever, but mixing it up and kind of doing your own thing. The hat is called Molig, Molig, and look at the colors. 
so cool. I have got to make that. And it's by Anna Huseman. And it says her designs are inspired by nature, organic shapes of leaves and berries, textures of moss, like lichen or bark. Um, when I was designing the hat, I was thinking about walking in the freezing cold, especially in the morning when every blade of grass and every branch is covered with a fine layer of frost. This is beautiful. I love this. Okay, so yeah, this book. Pick it up if you haven't picked this up because it is just a treasure and it has so many different things, so many different ideas. There's that ruffle sweater. I mean, there's just some cool stuff in here, so it's definitely worth adding to your library, in my opinion. Um, another kind of different thing for me is I never really work with mohair, but I don't dislike it. I just never choose it. I'm more of a smooth yarn person and I don't know why that is. So I kind of thought I would change it up and get some mohair. This is Loopy Mango in this like lemon yellow. And I saw she has a t-shirt pattern, a mohair t-shirt. And when I saw the picture and the way they style it is so cool and modern and like fun. And I just love this lemon yellow so much that I was like, I'm just gonna make a mohair t-shirt. So I got, I believe five skeins makes my size of the t-shirt. Mohair so soft. Um, and I love Luby Mango. I love all their patterns. I love all their big, huge, chunky sweaters and all the brights. And I love their pinks too and like their fun use of color. But I thought a yellow t-shirt just might be fun in mohair so I'm gonna give that a try and see how that goes so that's gonna be on my needles soon and then also Bowie helped Bowie likes to be my yarn winder he's my helper he just like zens out and he's always asking every weekend do you have some yarn for me to wind and I'm like yep <laughs> also this is one of my favorite bags this is a hohi bag that I got a couple years ago I think when on her second sale and there's nothing wrong with it at all. I've, there's like nothing wrong with it at all. I'm sure. Um, but I don't really take it anywhere or travel with it because I'm so protective of this bag because I just love it so much. It's like a little bucket bag. It's, it just stands up so nicely, but I never want it to get dirty or lost or stained or like, I don't want to set it on the ground. <laughs> so this is like my home only knitting bag. But I just love this thing. But, um, wound up in here, and I think I talked about this last time. This is Madeline Tosh wool and cotton um, in the color Birkenstock, which I am obsessed with this color. It's like a gray with brown and almost a purpley. It's really like subtle and really fun. Just such a great neutral, even with this. It's like, oh, that's nice. Um, I have a t-shirt pattern coming out really soon in the spring model and tash collection. It's like a wool and cotton collection and there is a very basic t-shirt in there. It's a raglan. Um, the sizing is like right on. I, um, my tech editors and I like nailed it and then another person checked it and they're like, this is really like good and it's solid. So if you need just a basic t-shirt pattern, that's a raglan. I have one coming really soon and it is good, good, good. So I'm gonna make one for myself because I sent the pattern off to Madeline Tosh for photos and everything. So I got, I believe five skeins of this to make one for myself in Birkenstock. So that's gonna be on my needle soon. I cannot wait. And that one goes fast. It's a DK, I believe on US sevens. And the first one knitted up really quickly. And so I think this one will go even faster just because I know exactly what I'm doing. And it's just so straightforward. I just love to speed along through stockinette sometimes. It's just so nice. So, and it would also be very cute with stripes. You could totally just stripe it yourself. Just go like every two rows or every one row with two colors. And that would be really fun as well. I don't have a lot of else really going on except this um last night i hung out and knitted with one of my longest not oldest but like most long-term knitting friends locally um 
we have a little group that has knitted together since our kids were babies, like since our oldest kids were babies. So at least 15, 16 years. Um, so we go way back and we've knitted through all the life phases, all the things. Um, and she right now is dealing with breast cancer, but she just had her last chemotherapy appointment a couple of weeks ago and she got some really good news. And so we were all really, really happy to hear that and happy that she was doing well and things were going as well as they can. Not great, but like going well. And she's um, coming up on a surgery soon. So I was asking her, do you want me to knit you some knitted knockers? Um, if you don't know what these are, it is for breast cancer patients after they've had a mastectomy. It's totally optional and she doesn't actually need them. With her surgery, it's gonna be different. She just found out where um, it's, there's gonna be expanders and different things going on. So she actually won't need knitter, knitted knockers, but um, I'm gonna make some anyway and just send them to the knitted knockers people. There's like a website. Um, so if you feel inspired to do this with me, I'm gonna make a couple pairs. Um, you basically go to knittedknockers.com and there is a list of yarns that you have to use um, because they're approved and they are soft against the skin because it's a very sensitive area. Um, and this is one of the approved yarns. It's the Kobu by Lion Brand. Very affordable, very nice, very soft. Um, it comes in different shades. It is, what is it made of? Cotton and bamboo. And you can see right on there, it's approved by knitted knockers, and that is really important. You don't want to send them anything that's not on their list. Um, so I'm, I'm glad my friend does not need this, but I'm going to send a couple sets um, in her honor to knitted knockers. And um, you can, I, I believe there's like all the directions and there's patterns on there, the exact patterns they want you to use. There's knit and crochet. And I believe um, for the knitted ones, or maybe both, you can, you leave it open like you leave it so you can open and close it in the back and then you include like the stuffing and then you can put some extra so they can adjust on their own to see like what size they want it to be and adjust, <coughs> so sorry, the amount of filling in it and like, you know, cinch it closed if they want. So I'm going to be making a couple of pairs of those, even though my friend does not need them, somebody will. And if you want to join me in doing that, that would be pretty great. That I think is all I have for today. I need a drink of water. <laughs> it's like the dry air. And I need to go pick up my kids from school. So just wanted to check in a little for a quick sec and update you on my knitting projects. Mainly this one that is so much fun. I cannot wait to try this on and write up a little thing. I've kind of got a thing written already, but just got to finish up the details after I finish the whole thing, the whole knitting journey of this awesome sweater. This, by the way, which I did not say before, is called the Morcella Cardigan. It is not one of my designs. It's someone else's. Um, I totally forgot her name, but I will put it in the notes below. But it is a really fun cardigan, and I also want to make one in a neutral now, like in an oatmeal color, because I just feel like it was a fun knit. And I just know it's going to be really wearable. So I think I'm going to make a second one if I have time. With all the other stuff I have going on. We'll see. Um, my two, by the way, I made a two knit list on my phone in my notes app. And I wrote down every project that I already have yarn for. And then all the ones that I want to knit that I don't have yarn for that I'm looking for yarn for. Um, and the list is massive. I was shocked. And then I also looked like on my computer, what patterns do I already have? Um, and then I also have a list of things like that I need to design. <laughs> and I don't know. I really need to sit down with a planner and kind of hash out what I should be doing in the next few months and maybe even over the summer to get things done by fall and see how this goes. Um, there's some self-publishing stuff that might be in the works. There's some other collabs in the works. So I've got like, I got to get a handle on everything and like reel it in and be a little bit realistic about what I'm casting on because I'm kind of all over the place right now. And this is just how it, I tend to get like, 
I don't know. So I need to go look at this today before I pick up my kids while it's still quiet, hash it out. I'm also um, going to be teaching for the first time. I mean, I teach, I teach knitting classes all around the city and I've done that for quite a few years, like since 2010 or something like that, 2008, I don't know. Um, but the art center, which is our art museum, the Des Moines Art Center, um, it's where I take pottery classes right now. And they overheard me talking about knitting. And I was talking about New York City and my dresses that I had made and stuff in the fashion show. And one of the teachers there is um, the director of classes. And so they asked me to start teaching fiber arts classes in the fall for children, teens, and adults. So, and this is sort of my dream. Like, if you could tell me as a kid, like someday you're gonna be like an art teacher at an art museum, that is goals. Like, this is, everything I hoped my life could be. <laughs> I'm taking pottery classes, A, super fun, at the art museum. Like, I also love taking my kids to the classes there. It's just like, we're so lucky to have this beautiful place in our city that has so much art and so much stuff to learn and do. But anyway, I get to teach there this fall. Um, I have some really fun ideas for teens. I might do a little bit of fashion. I might do a little bit of like crochet and um, knitting like yarn bombing stuff, um, kind of extreme knitting because I always like the big chunky stuff. Um, you know, finger knitting for little kids. There's just so many things you can do. So I have a whole list of ideas. And I'm going to start writing my proposals for the fall and I'm really excited um, to have that opportunity to do that. And it's just going to be another fun thing to work into my weird conglomeration of little jobs that I do. <laughs> Like I have a not normal work life. <laughs> I do the graphic design freelance, knitting pattern design, like I don't know, like other yarn related things and then now design for a yarn company and then teaching fiber arts classes at an art museum. Like <laughs> chaos, but all so fun and creative. So I'm not complaining at all. I'm super excited for these things coming up. I just have to kind of focus, do a little bit of planning, figure it out. Anyway, that's my life update and knitting update for the week. Um, I hope to make another video next week. I think I'm going to do a sock knitting machine video on my Dean and Bean machine because I need to work on that again and practice some more because I have another crank in that I'm going to go to in April. I can't remember the date in Kansas City. It's a Dean and Bean specific crank in with just Dean and Bean machines. And I still have so much to learn. And that's really, I found out the, the best place to do everything and learn everything. So I can't wait for that, but I need to practice a little bit before I go. Anyway, I hope you have a great week. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've been watching and liking what you see, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and give me a thumbs up. That also helps me out a lot. I'm trying to grow a little bit here on YouTube and it's like a little slow, weird process, but um, I really enjoy it and it's really fun. And um, I love hearing your feedback and your comments and reading everything. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you in the next video.